to stay tuned because we have got a remarkable guest for you all the way from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Janet Boynes is here today. She's written a book and it's called Out, A Former Lesbian's Discovery of Freedom. And let me say right here today, we love lesbians and homosexuals. We're not here to condemn you today. We love you. But God has a better plan for your life. Yes. So please join Joni and me as we welcome Janet Boynes to Celebration. Janet, it's so great to have you. Thanks for having me. And I want to just tell you that Janet said to also let people know she is available. She needs a good husband. And the emphasis is on good, not just a husband, but a good husband. Well, she knows that, you know, you are always trying to set people up. So That's right. they, they'll have to go through us so first her to make sure. Be up there eventually, and you'll be able to contact her. You, you know, let me say something about, about this subject, um, because I know Janet was sharing that you, you watched Daystar, and All so you've maybe seen some of the programs that we've done on this. And uh, I appreciate you coming and sharing your story because... It takes a lot of courage. You know what, honey? I get a lot of emails from men and women who have come out of this lifestyle, and they'll say to me, you're, you're one of the only networks that will actually talk about this. And um, thank you. Please continue to talk about it. And because we do it with love and compassion. Because there are, there are people struggling who think there's no way out. And there is a way out, and that's why we bring these testimonies to you over and over again. And Janet's going to share hers. So well, thank you for Janet, doing that. The question that you know the, the, they always say on the secular news: Well, you were born that way. Janet, were you born that way? No, not. It was a choice. But I do think there were circumstances in my childhood. I think that caused me to go into homosexuality. Being raised in a family of seven kids, four different fathers. That's confusing wow. in and of itself. My mother was married to a man who molested me. I'm so sorry. The two under me, Patricia and Robert, they have the same father. I had a different dad, and the three under me, the father raised me. Well, this father was an alcoholic. My mom and him had a lot of intense fellowship, meaning there was a lot of fighting at our home. But what I realized, as Marcus and Joni, is when I would go to school, I would get in fights all the time. Well, I started beating up all the men. Well, as I was writing a book, I realized that I was beating up the men because I couldn't get to my dad. And I want to hurt my dad for hurting my mother. Wow. And then you took, put that on top of being molested, not once, but twice. Well, I made a decision. I didn't want to date any men, let alone African-American men, because I associated African-American men with abusing women. Was it hard for you, Janet, to understand the love of Heavenly Father? Because you, you had no type of role model here on earth as far as godly father that you could relate to? It, that is true, Joni. Not only then, but I'm still dealing with that. See, people don't realize that when you come out of homosexuality, it's a process. I mean, God can instantaneously take that away, but you still have to walk through it. You don't walk around it. If you fall, you get back up again. I want people to know that I want them to have hope. That's why we wrote the book. You want them to know the love of Christ? that love covers a multitude of sin, that we're not here to judge them, but those who want to come out, we want to be here to help them. Yeah. And we take that one step at a time. And Janet, is it sometimes, not every time, but sometimes almost like a sexual addiction, which if it is, could be like being addicted to anything where people try to quit, they try to stop, they struggle with it, and they fall and they get back up again. But the Bible says that that if you fall, that you do get up again. You don't just stay down. And I know a lot of people get discouraged and they think, well, I tried it and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And so they give up. Is that mm -hmm. true? You know, a lot of people give up. But the reason why they give up is because they don't want to persevere. Mm -hmm. They don't want to work on it. It's hard to come out of homosexuality. It just so happened that I moved in with a Christian family for a year. And I believe that's what God had planned for my life. And as we grow in the Lord, as I grow in ministry, that is my long-term goal, is to take people who want to come out of homosexuality and move them in, maybe with a Christian family, that all their kids are gone and they're looking for ministry, and help to uh, help this young couple or help this young person come out of homosexuality. So you have to go through that process with them because I was tempted all the time. Matter of fact, I'm still tempted today. But I got great people around me. And I most definitely like to shed light on them dark areas. I try to be transparent. Well, let's That's take so Ted Hager. Now, if he knew in his heart that he could tell somebody that I'm struggling with homosexuality, see, it's not sin unless you go into it. It's okay right. to be tempted. 
But if he could have shed light on that dark area, I don't believe he would have fell. Obviously, he didn't feel like he could tell someone. Mm. Now, see, that's a good point. The Bible says that we're all tempted. Absolutely. Temptation is not a sin, but it's when you continue to dwell on those thoughts or feelings to the point that you then start acting them out in your mind and then you act them out physically. So don't dwell on those temptations. And one of the best things I ever heard somebody say was this, you can only think of one thing at one time. And when the devil puts a temptation in your mind, start saying the name of Jesus or start pleading the blood of Jesus or start quoting a scripture because Satan can't talk to you while you're either praising the Lord or pleading the blood or you're quoting a scripture. That's true. That's true. Or when you're worshiping, you know, when you put a good worship CD on. But Janet, let's go back a little bit and talk about, um, of course, you said you were growing up, you were molested, I guess, by your stepfather. Mm -hmm. Then there was another incident later where you were molested and it was actually in the church. Talk a little bit about that because at this point, you're really kind of struggling with your whole identity and and you don't have trust for men Mm -hmm. in general. So I can see where you could actually be pulled into that. And and just about every former lesbian that I've interviewed has a similar story Mm -hmm. where they were molested by a a man that that they should have been able to trust. It's like men, and so Mm -hmm. that makes them then attracted to women. Yeah. So so tell us, go walk us through that a little bit. You know, during that time, even though we, my mother, in spite of everything we went through, she sent us to church. But it was one particular day when I was going to church, I went down to the bathroom, and it was one of the altar guys followed me downstairs, and in the bathroom he wouldn't let me out, and he molested me. Now that time I told my mother, Mm -hmm. because I was afraid I was going to, I was pregnant. I didn't tell her about her her ex-husband or the man she was separated from that he molested me because I was too afraid that I was going to be blamed for it. And I think that's what most kids do is they hide that in their heart because they think that they're going to be blamed for it. And a lot of kids are. The parent wind up staying with that spouse or that significant other and they blame the child because they're insecure within themselves. So when that happened, when did you actually act out the act of um Lesbianism Was that later after this event took place? It was later in life because as a child, I was always told, don't get involved with these other kids that were living the homosexual life. People used to tease me and tell me that I was going to be a lesbian. They said I was a tomboy. I wasn't really like because I was such a bully. I beat up everybody. Nobody wanted to be my friend. But it was an eighth grade English teacher that took me under her wing. She moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota in 1976. She got me in college and said, if you ever want to come to Minneapolis, you can 1979, I called her, I packed my bags, went to Minneapolis, Minnesota, got involved in a Christian college. There was a woman there that invited me to church. So I went to church, gave my heart to the Lord, and started walking with God. God met a guy three years later, and he just, I loved him. Matter of fact, he was an African-American man, because I still associate African-American men with abuse. And so I was dating this nice white guy, and, and, uh, I really believe I was going to walk down the aisle. Three months before I was supposed to walk down the aisle, I met this woman. Well, the guy I was dating was a bike racer, so he's on the road all the time. He was traveling. He was playing in a band. And so this woman gave me a lot more attention. Obviously, I didn't deal with my childhood past, and it came back to haunt me. This woman gave me more attention than the guy I was dating, attentions that I really wanted for my mother that I didn't get as a middle child. I wind up sleeping with this woman. Now, I went and told my pastor said three things. Tell your fiance, get counseling, and call off your wedding. Well, I did one of the three. Told my fiance, and I walked away from the Lord for 14 years. Oh. Wow. And so 